Constitution. Apocleate brostas en techo via que crimeno a croaterio que me techus sino milites no milisus ne liki glossa et si fa prohorisus Dimitri Kimu glossa. My views will be entirely personal. They may not necessarily reflect those of Athens College where I recently arrived or Anatolia College where I served for a decade. Arriving at Athens College, I was very struck to find that 57% of last year's graduates applied to foreign universities and 100% were accepted. Now, part of that may be a plan B for candidates that uh, were hoping for the most competitive Greek university faculty, but still, the, the majority went to the United, United Kingdom for reasons of lower cost and proximity, but many too to the United States. Athens College, Excuse me just a minute here. The Athens College mission statement reads, in part, to provide the highest quality education according to international standards and to cultivate in its students habits of mind, body, and spirit necessary for responsible citizenship in Greece and the world. And yet, does the exodus that I have described fulfill this mission? The complacent answer is that our graduates will one day return from Caltech, MIT, Stanford, the Ivies, and yes, Oxford and Cambridge to be part of Greece's future leadership. But is this really the case? I happen to serve on a selection board of the Fulbright uh, interviewing candidates for graduate school in the United States. I followed the case of one such candidate, a very promising one, and I was very surprised that she turned down a generous scholarship and found alternate financing in order to get out from under the requirement of coming back to Greece at the end of her study. And now 30-ish, she's a leader in the Wall Street Journal's technology department and at night, a professor of journalism at Fordham University. It's very hard to lure somebody like that back to Greece. Still, I am nevertheless proud that, during the 70 years of the Fulbright program, well over 100 graduates of Athens College have received scholarships for undergraduate study in the US and have been required to return. Notwithstanding the success, however, there is a serious brain drain today. I am struck by the difference between Greek and Chinese policy regarding return of students studying abroad. The Chinese students are now 32% of international enrollments in the United States and constitute as much as 20% of students selected in, in selected classes at some top universities. At the end of the postdoc study, usually in advanced STEM fields, they are often lured home with offers of high-tech labs undreamed of even in the United States. In such cases, the US loses with their departure, deprived of their skills and potential contributions. The returning Greek student, by contrast, often struggles to find employment and is pursued by the Greek degree recognition agency DOATAP, formerly the Katsa, to supplement his or her Stanford or Caltech degrees with additional studies or qualifications to meet rigid professional requirements. While DOATAP has become more flexible in recent years, the result nevertheless is often years lost or even exclusion from a number of critical professions. In such cases, sadly for Greece, the US wins, reaping the benefits for its economy of the students' studies and brilliance. I dream, therefore, of reforms to incentivize rather than penalize the return of highly skilled Greeks to Greece. Staying for a moment with China and Greece, nowhere have I observed parents who have sacrificed more, were more personally involved in or put a higher premium on the education of their children than in China and Greece. This is indeed admirable, but 
paradoxically, in both cases, it has undermined the educational system. In China, the phenomenon of so-called tiger moms and the life-or-death focus on the dreaded two-day national higher education entrance examinations, or GOKAO, threaten health, sanity, and even life. Similarly, in Greece, over-reliance on private lessons and fundisteria to give children a competitive edge in university admissions is a vote of no confidence in the educational system, public and private. It deprives youth the joy of learning and personal development. As with the Gokao in China, cramming for the Panhellenics undermines both the pedia themselves and the very essence of pedia. It undercuts not just the educational system, but leads to corruption at individual schools, public and private, where pressure is intense for teachers to offer private lessons to their own students, a practice that is illegal, but almost impossible to prosecute or root out. While Likyun ga graduates may now gain direct access to prestigious universities abroad, such as the Imperial College London that Dr. Gass heads, with only the apolitarian and no outside validation like the Panhellenic grades or the GCE. I very strongly believe that the International Baccalaureate Diploma Pro Program rec remains by far the best preparation for universities in the US and UK. Experience has shown that IB students are best equipped to fit in and succeed at top-tier foreign institutions, knowing well in advance what to expect academically. The IB should be expanded in Greece beyond the few private schools in Athens and Thessaloniki where it is now offered. The choice of university study in Greece or abroad inevitably brings up access to private nonprofit education at home. The Greek con constitution provides that all education be public and private nonprofit options have clearly been slowed by public sector dominance. There has also been widespread misunderstanding that only branches of existing US universities have the necessary academic quality, gravitas, and prestige. In fact, branch accreditation by the six US regional accreditation agencies is often little more than an afterthought and branches whether in Greece or in the UAE, are not generally included in most accreditation visits. Thus, the branch institutions that have faced scandals and closure in Greece and elsewhere inevitably lack standalone accreditation and the detailed supervision that goes with it. In Greece, only a few institutions like the American College of Thessaloniki, a part of Anatolia, and the American College of Greece, Dury, have such accreditation equal to that of Harvard, Princeton, or MIT. These accredited nonprofit private colleges, despite the unfavorable regulatory environment, play an important role in attracting both Greek and international students, like the 43 Dury students in our audience today, with clear economic benefit to Greece. Thus, I dream of a Greece where one day private non-profit universities of high standing will flourish and create win-win synergies with their public counterparts as in the U.S. Faristopoli.